Hello scientists and welcome to day one of your online science learning. My name is Mrs. Robinson and I'm very lucky to teach the fifth grade leaders at Luff Elementary. First let me start off by saying we miss and love you. We wish we were with you but we're glad we at least get to be with you on these online videos. And I'm Mr. Bunyer. I teach fifth grade at Independence Academy. Sure do miss seeing you guys. I'd much rather be in the classroom, but as it is, here we are. So let's get some learning done. Hi guys, I'm Mrs. Clark and I teach fifth grade at Three Trails Elementary. And yes, please know we miss all of you. We would much rather be in the classroom with you learning, but we're doing the best that we can and we hope that you learn something along the way. Well, Ms. Clark, let's jump in. Sounds great. So technically today is day one of our science learning and today's big idea is about ecosystems, living versus non-living things. Ecosystems are communities, if you will, that are made up of all of the living and non-living things in an area. So let's define ecosystem. Ecosystems are known as anything in the area living, like plants, animals, um, humans even. Um, also combined with the non-living things like rocks, sand, soil, anything that we would consider a non-living item makes up everything that it takes to be an ecosystem. So we'll be focusing on that today. Let's kind of organize these thoughts in our brain by creating a T-chart. On the left side of our T-chart, oh and I should have said, please forgive me, as we do this journey, we're going to be taking science notes each day. You can put those notes in an extra notebook you have at home, or just grab a scratch piece of paper and a pencil. So in our T-chart, we're going to put living on the left, and non-living on the right. So let's think about some things in our world. Living things, as a general rule, can grow or reproduce. So, although there are microscopic things, let's think about plants and animals. I could think about a tree. That would be a living thing. Um, my puppy's at home, a dog. Even me. Humans would be over here. Non-living things. These things interact with our world and affect the living, but aren't living themselves, like a rock. Maybe even a dead branch that's laying on the ground. Even things like fossils, which once were alive, but are not alive anymore, would be considered non-living things. Here's your task, scientist. We've put three on each side. On your own, can you put three more living and three more non-living on your chart? Now, if you're anything like me, you're ready to get outside and you want to actually do some learning and some hands-on science things. So my challenge for you guys today is to go ahead, go outside, go to a park, even your own backyard. See if you can identify right there in your yard five things that are living and five things that are non-living. Good luck. And finally, to continue learning today, you will find some links below. Feel free to click on those and explore as you like. Some of them take a little longer and some of them are nice and quick. So do what you have time for and enjoy. Have a great day, scientists. 